And welcome everyone to the Streamsy community call for August 22nd. The first thing on the agenda are some PRs and issues which I added there. Uh, first, there are some which seem to be approved and run through the system test. So I wonder if they should be merged. This is the first one. Marosh, do you have any thoughts on that? You are one of those who approved it. Yeah, I, I just had one question there regarding the, the uh, timing improvements. And I think Luke uh, described it very well. And I think we can merge it. Like there is no problems with it. Okay, then let's merge it. And then the next one, which looks in a similar state, is this one. It's, it's again, yours, actually. <laughs> yeah, this could be also match, I think. But after the build, I think, on the main. Okay, and then there are some more PRs where I wasn't sure if they are stuck or if someone is still working on them or or what should we do about them? Um, The first one is about the system test documentation. Yeah, so um, basically the state of this PR is that uh, it's stagnating a little bit because uh, I think we have decided to have very generic labels here, which would just describe, I don't know, like off stuff, security stuff but I somehow misinterpret it and um, create very specific uh, labels such as plain text, steel, et cetera. So I think I would need to rewrote those a little bit and then uh, re review uh, Jakub or Lukas the PR. So maybe uh, if that's problem, I can close it and then I will just re reopen it with the changes. Or maybe we can just, I can draft this PR and I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess you should think about it. And if you don't plan to get back to it, to get it into the next loop anytime soon, then yeah, closing it or moving it to draft might be best. Okay. So for now, I think I will just move it to the draft and then. Okay. What about this one? Uh, well, this is another topic. So uh, I think the last day it was that Federico wrote something very simplistic in terms that uh, currently we have like three uh, complex test cases there in the topic operator uh, performance suite. And I think the concern from uh, Jakub and Lukas was that it takes so much time. So Federico rewrote it somehow and it uh, reduced to one test case, I think, and it's very quick, but it's missing, I think, the reporting stuff, which I have already there in these three tests. So uh, we spoke a little bit offline about this one and uh, I think when I kind of agree with that approach with the one test uh, scalability, which will be run uh, in the CI and it will be everything quick enough and not running like 24 hours for like three test cases. So I, I, I kind of agree with the one test case and also just one 
thing is that I would appreciate if there is some reporting as I have in the in my free test cases. Yeah, so I agree with everything you said, and we can add back the reporting stuff. Uh, but I also add some stability changes so that we can run uh, the test again and again, and we can have stable results because there was some uh, configuration, mainly stuff that were needed to, to make it more stable. Just that. Yeah. What does quick mean in this context, Marosh? You can look at my last comment. I think I had some figure. I don't remember right now. I think 20 minutes it was like something like that. Because you are, I think, uh, you're set up in Kafka cluster before everything, and then you just run those configurations through it, right? So it should be really quick, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quick. It's a couple of minutes, if I remember correctly. But I can, I can post the actual timing on my uh, machine. Yeah, more, yeah, the more problem, like moreover, it was the problem of the configuration. So I tried like, I don't know, like 20 uh, there, uh, but I reduce it now for, I don't know, like, it's like three configurations. So at most it would run like, my, my approach would run like eight hours now, but it's still like too much for the CI, I think, or some builds, etc. So So Federico approach is better, I think. In, ten, in terms of scaling. Yeah, so I, I forgot to add the timing here, but I can add uh, the timing uh, on my machine uh, so that we can compare with, with what happens in the CI. Uh, I, will, I will do that after the call. So where will you run it? Uh, on my machine, just to have some, uh, some, some no. time. But as the PR where it is expected to be run? Uh, so in the end, my idea was to run as part of the pipeline because it should be not too long. Uh, so it's, it's compared to other system tests. So it won't be, I think, a big deal to run that. But, but you will get, <clears throat> in Azure, you will get more or less random results because the environments yes. differ between the runs. Exactly, exactly. So that, that was also another point of my change. So to make it more stable, so it should give uh, similar results also on the CI with this. Change. I don't think you can really get that no, when no. the underlying hardware yeah. isn't we are, stable. We are, we are running it on a weekly basis on our pipelines now, these test cases. So it would be run like weekly. Okay, so what does that mean for the PR? Should we, do you plan to move it at any time soon or should we move it to draft or? I think we could dra draft it and Federico will update just reporting and then we could just re, like right, make it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so will you do it, Marosh? Yes, this is kind of good. Okay. And then the last PR is something what we forgot in the test container images repo. It moves from Java 11 to Java 17 in the image to make it easier to run it in FIPS environments. But somehow we didn't Looks like we approved it, Marosh, in, in oh, May, yeah. but never merged it. So we should merge it probably. Yes, yes, yes. I totally forget about that. We should definitely merge it. I guess the milestone is now 108. Yes. Okay. Anyone has any other PRs or issues they want to discuss?
So, so there is this one, which is almost complete. I just added some changes to uh, to docs and change log. Uh, I'm adding to what's what's new section. Uh, this one, maybe some maintainers can have a look later. Oh, sorry, wrong link. Uh, let me take the correct one, this one. Just, if you press enter, it will make the link. Okay. So is that ready for merge or is that what you are saying? Yeah, it is ready. Uh, if you check my last commit, it's just, it's mostly, um, it's one line called change, uh, very minor change, and then the, all the other changes are docs and uh, change log. So maybe you or someone else can have a look later uh, and see if it's ready to merge. Federico, nobody will understand what this means in the same way as I did not understood it in the PR description and had to ask about it. Okay, can, maybe we can add the same description that we have in the PR. Are you good with that? Yeah, I. to be honest, I'm not, this doesn't seem to be significant enough change to have it in the change log, but yeah, yeah. I, I guess the way you explain it in the PR that seem to be something what can be understood. Okay, uh, so I added this because Tom asked for that. Uh, because this is, in the end, it's, it's a change. It's a very minor change, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, uh, fine, okay. keep it if Tom asked for it, but nobody understands what final hours is, are normal reconciled means. Okay, I will I will use the same uh, text that we have in the PR. So mm -hmm. yeah, you, you have to make sure that the users know what it means. Does it mean that they have to remove the finalizers manually if they want to delete the topic? Does it yeah. mean that the finalizers will not be used on the topic or? Okay, I see. I will I will update that. Thanks. And and then. In general, if it has the approvals and run the regression test and is ready to merge, there's this label you can also add to it. And then, yeah, sooner or later, we will notice it and merge it. Oh, okay. We didn't notice that. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other PRs? or issues to discuss. If not, I don't think there's much change to the proposals. There seem to be three proposals which are in some active state of progress. So I guess if anyone has an interest in time, please have a look at them. Does anyone want to raise anything specific about any proposal? I think we're pretty close with the mirror maker one now, aren't we? I'll take a look at that. Yeah, it seems to have four approvals, <clears throat> I guess. Yeah, Paolo is on. Paolo and Lukas are, I think, away now, so I'm not sure when they get to it. But yeah, it definitely will be appreciated if you can have a look at it. And Federico, I'll have a look at the uh, the doc change on that um, PR you've got open as well. Oh, cool. Okay, thanks. Okay, if there's nothing more to proposals, then the issue triage is next.
unfortunately, maybe like last time, a lot of the stuff is around cruise control still, but let's see. So this one was about the idea to add some progress information about the ongoing Kafka rebalance to the Kafka rebalance status. That seemed to be something what Paolo thought was sensible, but this is not something what's as easy to implement as it sounds because if you start including some progress information in the status, you very quickly get into a never ending reconciliation loop. So I think this makes sense, but there maybe should be a proposal to discuss how it will be implemented and how the API will look like so that it doesn't do constant changes and constant reconciliations or Yeah, that sounds like something we should uh, definitely plan to avoid. So, and let's give it its triage, its proposal. Okay. So, next one is about the Topic operator use of SSL when talking with cruise control. So apparently we document how you can disable SSL in cruise control. But when you do that, then that breaks the topic operator because it's unable to talk with cruise control. So we either I guess from my point of view, we have two options. Either we somehow handle it in the topic operator and open the connections accordingly, or we should stick to the idea that the cruise control should be using TLS and we should remove the guidance for for disabling it in cruise control in the first place from the docs. Any thoughts on that? So I assume all the certificates get generated by Strimzy anyway, so there's no extra effort required on behalf of the user to hook it up with TLS. It's using TLS by default, so it's more about the disabling of the TLS than about enabling yes. it. Yes. So I guess I'm asking what's the use case for disabling it? So apparently, yeah, I don't know. Some people sometimes want to use cruise control in their own way. They want to access to the API. Apparently there is some cruise control UI, which believe it or not, doesn't support TLS. So I think that's why we document how to disable it. 
<laughs> okay, that makes sense. I think this is similar to what we have with Kafka brokers, right? So we enable TLS by default and you cannot disable it, right? And so it's, it's an approach uh, that we enforce also in other places, uh, but you can use the standalone version if you want to disable it. So I, uh, no, I don't know whether I would compare it to the brokers. I think the, I think the idea to always use TLS internally was not the best decision. And I think it's hard to change, but I don't think it's that we do not want to let the users to disable it. It's simply not as simple as just adding some flag to disable it, which is Boolean and that solves everything. So nobody really went through the effort, I would say there. I don't know, I, I need to go back to this issue and understand better the use case. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I think the use case for this per particular person who opened it is the cruise control UI. That's what you will find out from the commands. Jakob, when you say it's not a simple Boolean, what are you referring to exactly? Is it? No, that was the response to when Federico compared it to the communication between the brokers and so on. Okay. In in the cruise control case, you actually disable it by setting these fields in the cruise control configuration. Yeah. It also doesn't disable how cruise control talks with the Kafka brokers. It just controls what the cruise control REST API basically does. So should we keep it for next time or or should we try to make some decision on this? So um, I think people do find the cruise control UI quite helpful for um, understanding um, the rebalances in a you know, a, a deeper way than um, sort of what they can easily see through their custom resources. Um, but I don't claim to be an expert at all. I've never used it myself. But if that's right, then I think it's, you know, this is a, a perfectly valid and sensible thing for people to want to be able to to do. Yeah, but I guess the question is whether it's us who should absorb the missing features in the UI, right? Yeah, so the user sa says that the cruise control UI is not well maintained, and so that's why they are asking to us, uh, basically.
Yeah, I mean, it's not like I want to someone to disable someone from using the UI, but the question is how much baggage are we willing to take to handle some UI not supporting TLS in 2024, right? Yeah. Anyway, it sounds like we are not really moving forward, so maybe we should keep it for next time for people to think a bit more about it and... and move to the next issues or... Yeah, yeah. I, I want more time to think about consequences of these also in terms of implementation. I mean, I've not looked at this in a while, but I thought you could use a system with a uh, control UI. I mean, it's just... Uh... Basically, the UI has, is just HTML JavaScript, but you drop in the, in the web folder, so it's exposed like the other endpoints. So is it the way we deploy it in StreamZ that makes it incompatible with uh, TLS? I never use the UI, so I have no idea what is the exact issue it has. Yeah, exactly. I also never use that UI, so maybe we can try and see and understand better the use case. Because the way you install it, you just just copy it into the web the web folder, or whatever it's called. And there's no That's code. All you provide is the relative path. That's probably not as simple if you have cruise control deployed by an operator. Because you will not get the wiring, the ports, and so on. I mean, you put it in the cruise control folder, so that's where you put the UI in. The UI itself is not a web server. The UI, the UI is just uh, uh, the HTML pages that call the uh, cruise control endpoints. It's just JavaScript. There's no, there's no server side in the UI. Basically. Then I'm not sure why it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but I think I think that when we're using it at IBM. We, we were accessing it for HTTPS because I mean, it was a uh, SOC 2 HIPAA and uh, HeadRamp uh, environment. And, uh, everything had to be uh, uh, secured. So that's why I'm wondering is it the way we deploy it in StreamZ that makes because uh, I, in the UI, it has, it's, not, it's just a front end, basically. There's no server side, there's no. Yeah, maybe I can have a try with, with the cruise control UI and see if it works or if there is any workaround. I can also talk with Kyle, which I think has some experience with that. I mean, even I'm just browsing Kyle's blog post, but at the end he says, then navigate to HTTPS uh, blah blah in your browser, and that just below there's a uh, the index of the UI. Yeah. So looks like it's accessing it through HTTPS. I don't know. Yeah, probably you need to read the full blog to understand. <laughs> so... You mean this blog post? Um, yeah, if you scroll towards the bottom, just above the conclusion, like it's using, yeah, using the here, they then navigate to HTTPS, 
and, and he was so he's clearly accessing it through GPS. You know? Yeah, but he. Yeah, the question is whether it's type or intention. But I also don't think he's doing what you suggested. He deploys Nginx to run the oh, UI cool. in. I see. So that gives him SSL for the UI. But I think he... I mean, again, I'm browsing this, um, but it builds a custom container. So basically to put the UI in the, in the in cruise control. Yeah, I don't know why but Kyle did it here the way sure. he did. I'm not sure why. Yeah, okay, so. So I, I I also asked in the in the comment here for more explanation what exactly doesn't work. So maybe the user can provide us something. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Sounds good. Okay. So the next one is something from Paolo, where he suggests changing something in the Kafka rebalance assembly operator implementation, I guess. So do we want to move it on or do we want to keep it for next time? Yeah, I guess wait till Paolo's here and can explain okay. what his thinking is. Let's just skip it. So this is something I opened. So we added the support for authentication using the service account tokens. But the process for how to do it is right now very weird because you have to take the certificate from a Kubernetes config map, copy it manually through into a secret, and then reference the secret in the Kafka CR. So uh, that seemed to be very clumsy and rough. So I thought that we should think about how to improve this. But how exactly to improve it? Maybe that's something what should have a proposal. That was kind of my fault. Yeah, all that makes sense to me. Not all like this. Yeah, it looks good. Yes, the... Okay, so we do proposal in it. And that's it for this one. Uh, 
so the next issue is about scaling Kafka connectors with Keda, which doesn't work because the connectors do not have any matching pods. So they cannot be scaled through the Kubernetes uh, HPA resource and that's what Keda depends on. So I guess there's not much we can do, so we can just close it. Yeah. Is it worth linking this to the proposal we had for making Connect more community friendly? I think I wouldn't link it there because that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Like that would be probably just giving you false hopes or or is did that progress in any form on the Kafka side, Mikhail? No, this discussion has died. I mean there was discussion but has died a long time ago now. Uh but you know I don't think the idea is completely nobody's working on it now, but uh, I think uh, uh I think several people, including me, think that yeah, something needs to be done to make Connect a bit more flexible. Uh, uh, and this would be another justification to go to this direction. But I agree, I mean, uh, there's no, I mean, uh, there's no work going on right now, so I don't want to raise hope and say <laughs> there's being worked on. Okay, so let's close it. So the next thing is around doing some changes to improve the things, improve the scorecard. So I think these are in general useful things, so we should keep it. Some of them were actually already done, so. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I agree, we should keep it. Okay, this is something I created. So uh, as a new feature in Kubernetes 1.31, or maybe that's where it moves to beta already and it was added earlier, but there's this concept of the volume attribute classes for storage, which work a bit like storage classes, but they don't configure the exact storage being used, but they configure the attributes of the storage. So you can, for example, create a storage with a storage class, which says what storage type you want to use, and that's immutable, but then you can attach to the persistent volume claims, the volume attribute classes that define for example, the performance of the storage that this particular disk is always some particular type, but the attributes can define that it should do 10,000 IOPS, 50,000 IOPS, or 
100 megs per second or 500 megs per second when kind of supported by the storage and by the provider. And I know that from time to time we have some users who do this kind of changes. Historically, they have been done usually through some persistent volume claim annotations, but with this new volume attribute class in Kubernetes, it sounds like this might be something we add to the to the Kafka CR support so that the users can use it. It would likely need a proposal to exactly describe how the API would change and so on. Sounds sensible. So next issue is a bug I opened. <clears throat> it's about the way we handle the capacity overrides in the cruise control configuration. So we have there an outer loop which goes through all the nodes in the Kafka cluster. And within that loop, we have an inner, inner loop which goes through the overrides and it finds the override for the right node, but it also uh, raises warnings when you have an override for a node which does not exist. And this doesn't seem to work well because, for example, when it runs into an override for node two, well, so far it processed only, it's in the first run of the outer loop where it processed only the node zero then it kind of thinks that the node two doesn't exist and raise the warning so uh, you get in a single reconciliation possibly several warnings uh, that the overrides are badly configured while in reality none of them is valid so that seems like a bug which should be improved Yep. Sounds yep. like a bug. Maybe this might be a a good start thing or something. Yeah. Because I think the code is all in one place nicely. One just needs to either restructure it or change how it checks the non-supported nodes. OK, the next one is from you, Federico. And I wasn't really sure if it's directly related to the PR you opened, or if it's mm. not. So this is related to one of the comments you add to the um, user bug fix uh, on the topic operator. And I agree with that. So we are adding the, this topic ID when the topic is created, but we never update it or reconcile. So for example, when you unmanage or pose a topic, uh, when you unmanage topic, the topic ID could change. Uh, so we need to uh, reconcile once it's uh, managed again, if it is managed again. Uh, so we need to to improve that. Uh, but uh, I'm waiting the, uh, for the bug fix to finish, and then I will work on this. If no one else wants to uh, to, to to work on it, 
it's, it's the same uh, reasoning that we have with topic names. So when we unmanage a topic, we remove the topic name because it would change. Uh, and then we add it back when it is managed again. So it should be so, something similar. So when you say that we should reset it, you are basically saying that we should not set it? Yeah, yeah, reset it, remove. Uh, okay. But only while it's not managed, is that correct? Yes, when not managed. I guess okay, not, so we not, don't... not managed or paused? Uh, uh, when pause for one pause, uh, I don't know if we want to have this, the same behavior, probably not. Uh, So I, I think in the steps to reproduce, you say either pause it or unmanage it. And then in the expected, you say that it should be set when it's ready and managed. So when it's unmanaged or when it's paused, then it should not be set. That's the way I would read it. Yeah, I think I think the issue is the same. So when you when you pause the topic, uh, reconciliation, it could be deleted and recreated with the same name, so the topic ID will change, right? Yeah. Okay, so we need to handle for, for both operations. Okay, so I guess we're going to keep it. Yeah. Should we set some good start or help wanted labels on it or? Just keep it as it is, and you will look at it. I, see. I think it's, it could be a good start, yeah. Yes, thanks. OK. And then the next one is about an issue with some class path conflict where we include gRPC as part of the tracing support. But then if someone wants to use some gRPC connector for Kafka Connect, that might conflict with the gRPC in the, in the class path and cause issues. So I think that's a that's a valid concern, but we do not want to remove the open tracing support because of this. And we already have this issue with the idea to separate the third party libraries into a separate class paths and include them only when they are actually needed by any of the features. So maybe we can close this issue in a favor of solving it with this older issue. Um, I have a question. Um, yeah. So I thought Kafka Connect plugins have got class loader isolation anyway. So how is this possible? They load everything from the main class path, don't they? Like no, that's what you... the, the plugin path config specifies a a path from which to load plugins, which should be isolated from the main class path. Yeah, but when you load the plugin, the plugin class path is what's in the plugin itself, plus everything in the libs directory, or in the in the class path of the Kafka itself, isn't it? Okay. Yes, it could be. So it's not a it's not truly a isolated class path because it's. It's yeah, got I, access to implementation classes rather than just the Connect API. Yeah, I think it isolates the plugin from the main Kafka kind of part, but like the Connect part of Kafka doesn't have the plugin in class path, but the plugin itself has Kafka on the class path. Uh, Mikael, I don't know if you know that better, but. That's my understanding. 
Uh, I think it's along those lines, yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't risk my, myself at saying exactly how it behaves on uh, the record, but I think it's along these lines. Yeah, so, so basically what would happen if we implemented this issue would be that we would make sure on the streams side that the things we have in the we add to the to the Kafka libs directory are basically included only when they are enabled. So for example, like we would have there some separate directory with the JMX export libraries or in the future maybe Mikhail's new metrics reporter. And that would not be in the class path by default unless the user configures the metrics in the custom resource. Similarly, or OAuth tracing and so on. So like it wouldn't <clears throat> prevent completely kind of conflicts, but it would, for example, mean that the tracing won't be in the class path unless you are actually using tracing. So like if nothing else, you will have a choice what to do. Yeah, it narrows the scope of the bug and gives people a workaround if they can do without the tracing. So does it seem reasonable to close this one and kind of as a, in a way, duplicate of the 7105? Um, but this problem still exists, right, for anything that's actually part of the Kafka Connect implementation, but not part of the API contract that it has with its plugins. Yeah, but you would expect that the connector authors write and test the connectors for that. They do at one point in time, but the well, certainly if I was reviewing a KIP in Kafka and someone proposed adding a new dependency to the connect runtime, this isn't a, a problem that I would have anticipated. So it's not a kind of compatibility that I would have reasoned about. So I suspect Connect authors could test today and find it's fine, and then a future version of Connect could hypothetically break right. it by adding a new dependency. But that's not something what streams can really address for the. No. So no, like that Kafka's would need to problem. be addressed in Kafka to change the class path for the plugin itself, right? Yeah. So I guess, yeah, we can close this one in favor of the 7105 as a improvement on the streams side and alternatively it can be raised also on the Kafka side to kind of reduce the class path provided to the plugin, if that's possible in some way. Yeah, I mean, I think it should be, but I don't know enough about, um, yeah, the precise class loader gymnastics that would be necessary. Yeah, I mean, one thing you would need to keep in mind is that probably the existing connectors already rely on the stuff on the Kafka class path, like some Jackson libraries or whatever. So, yeah, even if that changed, there might need to be some switch to kind of allow the migration. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that just like shows how bad the problem is, right? Because it means that if Kafka upgrades those dependencies, then they can end up breaking connectors. But yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's Kafka's problem. So I think the, what you're proposing to do with this issue in Strimzy is fine.
it's all like this. Does it make sense? Yeah, perfect. Okay, then the remaining two issues for triage, I think we should skip them because we are running out of time, but we also need Lukash for them, so should keep them for the next time, I guess. And that brings us to any other business. Okay, do you want to say something to the video or? Wait, yeah, is Kate on the so, call? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just to say that um, unless anybody objects, I'm planning to record a new intro video using Craft. Um, and I was going to just follow the same instructions that we've got in the quick start. So it's just kind of FYI in case anybody wanted to object and just to let you know that, yeah, I've worked out what the sets would be. So I'm going to hopefully record that later today. Great. We will be looking forward to that. Anyone has anything else they want to raise? Yeah, uh, good questions regarding uh, metrics with water. So I think we're at the point where we can make a first release. Uh, talking code base, code wise. Uh, so what's the process to make a release? Uh, how do we organize for uh, docs or tests? What are we be needed to, to make first release? So, uh, I mean, I guess the docs for the metrics reporter itself, that would traditionally be in the readme in its own repo. Okay. And, th and then the main Strimzy docs about how to use it, that would be done in Strimzy when it's adopted to the Strimzy operators. And yeah, I don't know about tests. You would need to talk about that, I guess, with Maros, Lukash, and so on. Uh, the tests with the operators, that will be done again when it's integrated into the operators. I have no idea what kind. I know you have some unit tests there, but I don't, I have no idea how the if you need some additional tests in the metrics report repo directly or what exactly are the requirements and as for the release itself either i can do it or i guess yeah anyone else from the maintainers can do it or you should be able to do most of it as well so i can also show you how the process looks like, but I think I set up almost everything for it to be able to release. So that should not be a problem. Yes, yeah, so if you could share those, those steps, uh, be uh, be good. And thanks for setting up uh, uh, all the, the CRM. Yeah. Okay, anything else? And I guess, Mikhail, we can take the details offline then with the individual people as we are running out of time. Yeah, sounds good, thanks. Anyone has anything else? If not, then thanks for joining and thanks for sticking through a long call and uh, see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bye. Yeah.